nice little mix. But look, I'm going to tell you, it's like I don't want to make people think that I don't understand the inconsistencies on on the pro-choice side because, like, look, there's a lot of people who are pro-choice and they're vegan, you know, <laughs> right? And and it's like and, and it's like you you see, look, good. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad I got the, yeah. the, the the laugh out of that yeah, that I that I need. But it's like the potential for life. It's okay to end the potential for life, but not your animals. Don't yeah, you dare yeah, touch those don't, animals. Don't, don't, right, right. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, how does this happen? I yeah. get, but you know, so there's but, inconsistencies but, but, on both sides. I would be really fascinated uh, to know how these animal rights activists who are against experimenting on animals for the benefit of humanity feel about the kind of research we were discussing earlier <laughs> with unborn children. Oh, you know, PETA wouldn't care. Yeah. I really exactly. doubt they'd care at all. No, of course not. Hey, what is up guys? So a very common right-wing talking point against vegans is that, you know, vegans are hypocrites because they're so vehemently against the suffering and death of animals, but aren't pro-life. Basically, the idea is that for an ethical vegan to be logically consistent within their own moral system, they ought to be pro-life and oppose the killing of unborn fetuses in the same way that they oppose the killing of animals. On a side note, this video was actually partially inspired by this meme that I've been sent from multiple people, which in my opinion fails on so many levels. The objective of the meme is to show that vegans are inconsistent for thinking that eating eggs is wrong because it quote unquote kills a baby chicken, while simultaneously not thinking that an unborn fetus being aborted is quote unquote, killing a baby. I say this fails on so many levels because number one, the commercially sold eggs that vegans oppose eating aren't even fertilized. So I'm not even sure how a vegan could consider eating an unfertilized egg to be killing and eating a baby. And honestly, I've never even heard of a vegan who thinks that commercially sold eggs are fertilized. Number two, vegans oppose eggs because of the exploitative process toward the laying hen, which obtaining eggs entails, as well as the fact that the egg industry involves grinding up male baby chicks alive because they are considered useless to the egg industry. All right, so this shitty meme aside, let's get into the actual meat of this video. I want to discuss three things. The first thing will just be how annoying it is to me when super conservative pro-life people respond to veganism with this clear diversionary tactic and two quo qui fallacy, where they just imply that vegans are hypocrites for not being pro-life instead of actually responding to vegan argumentation. The second thing will be whether there are logically consistent ways in which a vegan can possess ethical vegan principles while remaining pro-choice to varying degrees. And the third thing will just be a kind of brief summation about my animal rights activism from back in college, where I used to deliberately go to anti-abortion demonstrations and try to use anti-abortion activists' own ethical codes to convince them to go vegan, which is something I honestly just thought was fun and something I also regret not recording. And two disclaimers, this video is not a pro-life versus pro-choice video where I'm giving my views and settle the classic debate. We will just be looking at pro-choice positions vegans can take while remaining logically consistent within their morals. And second, I'm aware that the pro-life pro-choice topic itself is an extremely nuanced one and that I definitely won't be able to address all possible pro-choice positions that are logically consistent with vegan ethical principles. So if you are a pro-choice vegan and I don't touch on your views in this video, please let me know below and let me know what those views are. So yeah, I just want to talk about how annoying this is, honestly, because right-wing people are very, you know, big on personal responsibility. And then when veganism gets brought up, which traditionally is a topic related to holding people accountable for the suffering that they cause with their commodity purchases, they're just like, oh, uh, well, uh, you support abortion, so, you know, fuck you. And all this is, is an appeal to hypocrisy and a refusal to engage with the actual arguments of veganism. There was a Turning Point USA club back at my university, and we were always like across from each other. Like we were the animal rights club, and then they were the Turning Point club, which if you don't know, Turning Point is a very like right-wing conservative kind of uh, organization and they would just be very pro-life. And whenever I would try to go over there to talk to them about animal rights, the first thing they'd bring up is abortion and pro-life and this claim that I'm a hypocrite for, you know, not fully being against abortion while advocating for animals. Super annoying and very bad faith. So that rant aside, let's now talk about logically consistent pro-choice positions which vegans can take. So when it comes to most vegans, valuing sentience is very important and aborting non-sentient fetuses could be consistent with fighting for sentient animals, and therefore, one can hold a vegan position in combination with a pro-choice position toward non-sentient fetuses while remaining logically consistent within their own moral system. This is probably the most common and logically consistent vegan pro-choice position I've seen in the vegan community, and it also is a convenient position to take when you consider the fact that most abortions occur 
well before a fetus begins to feel pain. This essentially means that a vegan who takes this position does not have a moral issue with the majority of abortions and instead a small minority of them. So clearly this vegan pro-choice position involves the distinction between sentient animals and non-sentient fetuses and brings rise to the empirical question of when does a fetus become sentient? I'm not going to spend much of this video going into the actual empirics of fetal sentience simply because my goal here is to investigate logically consistent pro-choice positions a vegan can take, but to be brief because I do find the topic of fetal sentience interesting, it is commonly thought that the cortex and intact thalamocortical tracts are necessary for pain experience within a fetus. Given that the cortex only becomes functional and the tracts only develop after 24 weeks, many reports on fetal sentience rule out fetal pain until around the final trimester. However, here is an interesting paper contesting the idea that this neuroscience alone can absolutely rule out fetal pain before 24 weeks. If you want to read it, I'll have it linked in the description as well as some other papers on fetal sentience. So then there's my body, my choice vegans. These vegans consider a relevant moral difference between the animals they aim to save from animal agriculture and a fetus to be that a fetus is within the body of a woman and that regardless, so long as the fetus is in the body of a woman, it should be the woman's choice as to what happens to the fetus. Technically, they can hold this position and remain consistent on veganism, although they are committed to thinking that it is ethical to abort a sentient fetus a day before, or even a second before, a baby is due to come out of a woman's body because the fetus is technically still in the woman's body and therefore it should still be the woman's choice. So the next vegan pro-choice position is a more nuanced version of the my body, my choice vegan position. There are vegans who have told me that they consider it okay for a fetus to be killed while they still require the mother to live and have not achieved fetal viability, which is just defined as the ability of a fetus to survive outside of the uterus. Like I said before, this is kind of a variation of the my body, my choice position, except that it should no longer be the woman's choice once the fetus has achieved fetal viability and can survive outside of the womb. But the thing is that fetal viability exists as a function of biomedical and technological capacities, which are different in different parts of the world. So as a consequence, there is at the present time, no worldwide uniform gestational age that defines fetal viability. Fetal viability is not an intrinsic property of the fetus because viability should be understood in terms of both biological and technological factors. Just to give one example of when fetal viability occurs in the United States, fetal viability occurs at approximately 24 weeks of the gestational stage. This is not the case for other countries with significantly lower technological advancement. Because of this, one of the reductios of the specific vegan pro-choice position is that depending on the technological advancement of the location you're currently in, killing a baby currently inside a mother may or may not be ethical. It is basically as if the technology available to you at a given time will determine whether or not aborting a fetus is ethical. So these are some of the vegan pro-choice positions you can have. Again, I'm sure I haven't touched on every single one of them. So if there's one that you think is worth sharing, just comment it below. The fundamental point of this video is just that being vegan does not logically entail being fully pro-life. So the next time some right-wing conservative or even just a pro-lifer accuses you of being a hypocrite for being vegan and not fully being pro-life, just send them this video. All right, so now I just wanna briefly touch on what I used to do back in university when there were very common and frequent anti-abortion protests and you know events at my school. I would get so excited for this because you know it's always an opportunity for me to just go over and kind of question them and see like, oh, you're so strongly against abortion, but you still pay for innocent animals to be exploited and murdered on a daily basis. Plus all of those animals are sentient while the fetuses you fight for who are aborted are mostly not sentient. And it's so interesting to see because these anti-abortion protests and events, they have a very similar structure to vegan ones that include showing all the really graphic stuff. Like they'll show all the graphic stuff related to, you know, fetuses. So when I just walk by, it almost feels like a vegan protest, except obviously it's for, you know, aborted fetuses. So I used to go over there and I know that their reason for being there isn't to talk about veganism. So respectfully, I would just go over and talk to them about their cause and they'd question me on my position related to, you know, pro-life, pro-choice. And a lot of times I would just kind of go with what they want just so I can get to the vegan talking point because ultimately that's all I really cared about in those moments. And I would say like, so are you vegan? And they'd be like, well, no. And they'd kind of make a face because they knew where I was going with this. And I'd be like, so what is your justification for, you know, paying for innocent animals to be murdered for taste pleasure? Because, you know, many people who get abortions have much bigger reasons to get abortions than taste pleasure. And after I've established to them that there is no need to consume these products and that they're really just eating them for pleasure, I then established that we are now in a scenario where they're sitting here fighting against women, trying to get an abortion for 
much more, you know, reasonable reasons when you compare those reasons to taste pleasure. And not to mention that the animals that they're killing for their taste pleasure are all sentient. Whereas the women who are committing these abortions are committing these abortions toward mostly non-sentient beings. And most of the time when the person was being intellectually honest and we're coming from a more secular pro-life position, because you know, if they're religious, it's a whole nother discussion, they would end up realizing at the end of the conversation that, hey, maybe they should be vegan according to their pro-life values. Now, when the person was more of a religious one, then I had to get into the Bible and talk to them about, you know, the reductios of accepting things as moral because the Bible says so, or God says so, and how, you know, if God technically said to do anything, you'd have to call it moral, and that'd be a whole nother discussion. But anyway, guys, just wanted to share that little story because it's something that I really like to do. And if I ever find myself in a situation where there's anti-abortion protests in my area, I'll definitely try to go out there and, you know, bring out my camera and just film our interactions. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird stupid wannabe sense of irony here. W who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird stupid